Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty on this channel, but on today's video, I'm gonna take a subscriber's challenge and see how it works out. So Sharon asked me, Marilyn, can you put DTF transfers on ball caps or trucker hats or whatever you wanna call them? I've never tried it, so that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Now, if you're not familiar with DTF, DTF is a special printer, and first of all, it stands for direct to film. So you are printing onto film like this. You're printing directly onto the film with your DTF printer. You're using DTF ink, and the nice thing about DTF is it actually has white ink. So you can put it on any background color that you want. Unlike sublimation, you really wouldn't be able to sublimate on something like this. So you have so much more designer freedom and garment freedom. So you print it out, then you put this adhesive powder on the back and then you cure it. I'm gonna cure mine in a curing oven, but you can also use a griddle. You can use an upside down Cricut Easy Press. You can place it under the platen of a heat press, just don't close it down. Now other things I'll use, I'm gonna use one structured hat and one unstructured hat. I'm probably gonna use some heat resistant tape. I'll also use this lint roller. I'm gonna print it for my DTF printer and I'll cure it in my DTF oven. Now I have other videos where I show you how you bring your design in and how you print those. So if you wanna see that today, check out some of those other videos. Now you don't have to have a DTF printer to work with DTF transfers. If you're not in the market for a DTF printer, you can order transfers. There are many different companies and small businesses that sell them. If you're in the market for a DTF printer, you have a lot of options there too. For my DTF print, I'm gonna use a pro-colored DTF printer. Before we move on, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell and then select the all notification. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now here's the front side of my designs. And these two over here, they would look really nice on a white cap or a light cap, but my caps are so dark, I didn't want the colors competing. And so I printed them in all white, except each part of it has just a little black outline. So that's what I'm gonna use on my caps today. Now I've shown this process really close up in an overhead camera. Today, I'm really just kind of experimenting. So I'm gonna talk about it as I do it, but this is the view you'll see. So this is the DTF powder. Again, it is an adhesive powder. So you sprinkle that on the back side of your design, and then that will attach to the ink. You'll pour off the excess, kind of tap it to make sure there's not any excess. And then I'm gonna put this in the curing oven. So what I do to make sure all of the ink is covered is I go back and forth several times, at least four to six times, sometimes more. Now I've never printed a mostly white design like this, so I'm really excited to see how it turns out. All right, how many times has that been? I don't really know. And it doesn't matter if you put too much powder on here because you're gonna put it right back in your container and you can reuse it. Now this brand of powder that I'm using is Yamation. I love it. I started using it with the DTF hack and so I just continued to use it. All right, so I poured most of that off. Now I'm just gonna tap this, get the rest of that excess off. Then we're gonna go put this in the curing oven. Now while that's curing, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up here. So I take my paper 
and I fold it like a taco and I just dump that excess powder right back in the container. Then you can reuse this multiple times. Now I got this container at the Dollar Tree store. When you get DTF powder, at least this brand, it comes in these bags. So I put it in this container and then I cut out the front of the bag and I taped it on. I'm using the fine powder. There's fine, medium, and coarse, and I prefer the fine. Now while my print was curing, I went ahead and I got my hat on the hat press. I set it at 325 for 10 seconds and I went ahead and preheated my hat. I also cleaned it with a lint roller. So here's the front side of the images or the designs and you're actually looking through this paper. For today, because these hats are dark, we're going to use these two white ones. I don't really think they would look that great with the dark colors on them. Now that I've cut them apart, let me show you the back side of these. It has kind of an orange peel effect. That's the adhesive powder that was cured and now it's dry. So I can touch this. If I wanted to, I could store these. I don't have to use them right away. Okay, my hat's cooled down from the preheat. So I can go ahead and put this on. Now I wanna watch out for those little vent holes in the hat. I don't want my design to be on those. So I'm gonna stick my head in here and check this out. I'm gonna cut that part out. You don't wanna see the back of my head. I'm using just a little bit of heat resistant tape just to hold it in place so it doesn't shift when I put the platen down. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and press this at 325 for 10 seconds. Now I'm using really firm pressure, which is what you want to use with DTF. Now hopefully that heat platen was, ooh, it was, all the way over my design. All right, let's go ahead and take this off. And we're gonna let this cool down. Meanwhile, we'll do the other hat. Now this other hat is a structured hat. So it's harder right here on this part of the head. And it has that black material inside there that makes it pretty darn stiff. So I don't know if this is going to work, but we are getting ready to see. So I'm going to pull that sweatband out. And then on mine, you pull up on this red lever and get the bottom part of this metal inside your hat. Now at this point, this is when I wish I had three hands because this can be a little tricky. I have not perfected putting a hat on a hat press. Okay, I am very concerned about this because with the structure, it's not even touching the platen of the heat press. So I'm gonna tug on it try to get it situated a little bit better. And I don't want you to have to suffer through all that. So I'll be right back. All right, I have a feeling this is going to be an epic fail. If I can pull this broom down, there is gaps in between my hat and the platen. So I don't think this is gonna work out too well, but we're gonna try it. It's a Dollar Tree hat. So I'm not wasting too much money if this doesn't work. But I wish I could get it to straighten out on this platen just a little bit better. Maybe if I put a washcloth or something under there, that would be better. But we are moving forward. We're going to go ahead and preheat this. Okay, that might work out but I do need to let that cool. If I were to put this adhesive on there right now, it would start sticking to the hat. And I wanna be able to place it exactly where I want it before it starts sticking. Okay, I think that's fine. Let me get a couple pieces of tape here. Now this one doesn't have those vent holes. 
So in that regard, it's going to be easier to work with. I don't have to have a design that dodges those vent holes. All right, 10 more seconds at 325. All right, once again, I want to make sure that there was heat all the way covering my DTF, and there was. So we'll take this off. Let me move my hat press out of the way, and then we're going to peel these off and see what happens. Now this hat is all the way cooled off. This one is just very slightly warm. So let's go ahead and start with this hat. Let's go ahead and grab that tape. And it worked. It worked. Let me look at that. That's pretty cute. All right, let me hold that up so you can see it. Again, I did all white with just a small black outline because of the color of the hat. I like it. What do you think? All right, so the hat I was worried about. Let's see how this one goes. Oh my goodness, that one's coming off beautifully as well. Now, look at this hat. Let me get this closer to the camera. I want you to see that the hat press on this structured hat, I feel like it made kind of a, a bend there. I guess that might work its way out, but my experiment was to see if I could get the DTF to stay on this hat, and it did. Let me look at it. I can even see the texture of the hat through the DTF. That's a good thing. Let me get close and show you. So I'm happy to report that DTF can work on hats. If you haven't tried it, what I would do is I'd buy an inexpensive hat, give it a try, see how it works out for you. If you've tried it and it's not working well, maybe it's not enough pressure. Maybe you peeled your film too quickly. But get an inexpensive hat, experiment on it, hopefully it works well for you too. Now these are both cotton hats, but you can use DTF on other fabrics. So I don't know that that would have anything to do with it, but if you're having issues, try a cotton hat, nice pressure, and wait until your film cools down. So I hope this was enjoyable and helped somebody. If it did, please give me that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell. Make sure you select the all notifications. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Thanks again for joining me today, and until my next one, bye-bye.